One of our favorites, playing God on Broadway, an act of God, Jim Parsons from The Big Bang Theory, joining us. This is a, a role that you were born with, I, I, born to play, right? No, we all were. There's God in all of us, Dan. <laughs> Anybody could have played this. Actually, this is very true of this play. This really is constructed that anyone can play it. The only thing that has to change is in the very beginning, there's that whole preamble. You were kind enough to bring the entire family to see it, which yeah. was gracious. And may I say the Patricks are the healthiest-looking family I've ever <laughs> run into. They are. That is good stock, as Jim, they say. Jim thinks he's got to drop sports knowledge on my my family. I've never bored a family more in my <laughs> life than the Patrick family. It was the most ironic situation ever. I said something about Daryl Morey, and it was like crickets. They were all. Dan was saying something. I was like, "Oh, they don't care about your work at all." And he's like, "No, they don't." No, I said uh, Daryl Morey, the uh, Rockets GM. Real quickly, my family's like, huh? "What are the Rockets?" Yeah, <laughs> the Rockettes. <laughs> oh yeah, we we love them too. <laughs> Uh, but, but they're so nice, and again, just the they are everything Americans want to be. The Patricks yeah, are. Yeah. They really are. <laughs> I, they are. They've got they you are. fooled, Jim. They've no, they don't have me fooled. Your wife got a little fresh. Oh my God, my wife trying to pick up Jim, <laughs> and I, she I, did get a little close. I love her, by <laughs> the way. I really do. Not in that way, but you know what I mean. And she got a little close and said. We should go out. <laughs> and I go, what? What? And then I said, I go, oh, yeah, no, we should do like a foursome, you know. And everyone's, what's <laughs> happening? You know? <laughs> Jesus, In God. front of the kids. <laughs> the children were there. Oh. It, was, it was just horribly awkward. Yeah, we and, gave my wife grief. We still do. But I'm as bad as she is. I'm as, I'm as awkward socially as she is. We both have the really good intentions, but it just comes out very wrong. But when's the last, have you been nervous like that meeting somebody? Yeah. I, I, like who? A big-name person? Like a, a famous person where you were... Who makes me nervous? Like you got a little nervous. Um, I mean, sports figures make me nervous, really. Like, I, other actors do, too. Everybody makes me a little <laughs> bit nervous. I mean, I was born nervous. How has playing God changed Heavenly. you? Heavenly. Oh, how has it changed me? Yeah. Um, it's made me tired. It's put me on a low dose of steroids, you know, for the voice. Would you test positive right now? Oh, my God. I couldn't play. I'd be, uh, you know, out of baseball. So this is, you're using performance-enhancing drugs. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it's not illegal on Broadway. Oh, so if you won, like, a Tony, you could accept it. I could accept you Oh, could. of course I could. How would you feel? We were talking about LeBron James. I know you were. And I think that he should, I think he should win the MVP. So far, at least, he should win the MVP. But let's say you're on a show that got canceled. And you won the Emmy. Great. You'd have no problem accepting it? That is not a team sport in the same way. Well, the Big Bang Theory is a team sport. No, I understand. Yes, absolutely. I'm not denying an ensemble aspect to, to well-made entertainment. But, but it's not... Uh, well, f uh, first, uh, that's actually that's putting the cart before the horse. The main point is... And your heart of hearts, you really probably shouldn't be doing your art or your career is in entertainment for trying to win an award. You know, sports is geared towards an award. It's geared towards a team award. And I just think that, look, isn't this the good and the bad about LeBron and the age we're living in, yes. though? Are I you... mean, this is, uh, this is my issue, in fact, you know, that it's become so singular. I don't, does anybody care anymore about, you know... Eh, whatever. At least I came home with a trophy. Yeah. I don't know. Are you the LeBron of the Big Bang Theory? No. Oh, you're not? Well, well, for one thing, no, I don't think I'm the greatest actor to ever live. And I think, that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'd have to at least claim that to, to fit in. But no, I, 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 not at all. I don't think so. Are you the greatest CBS sitcom actor? No. I mean, CBS, like, I'm like, no. They had, like, Mary Tyler Moore. They had um, uh, Carol O'Connor. Current greatest. No. Okay. And what kind of butthead <laughs> would sit here and say that? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Possibly of all time. I knew it. I knew it. No, I, I, but, but that being said, and I told you this off air, I, I, I have never been closer to being a fan of LeBron than I have through this series. I mean, this is... This is, as a sports fan, really kind of neat to get to watch, isn't it? Do you feel? I think sorry for him. <laughs> no, no. That, no Are that you he's kidding playing, me? He's playing on oh, that, that team. No, 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 no. I mean, it's a one-man team. Oh, I, I'm never going to feel sorry for LeBron or anybody like that. I think he's 
he's very successful and he's so good at what he does and and he's happy with his life it seems to me so i don't i don't feel bad for i this is an excellent opportunity for him and this is why i'm actually enjoying watching him and kind of a fan of what he's doing he's taking it by the horns he's not doing it's not like well this sucks you know and it's really everything's crumbling around he's going out there and is one man it's one on five at times you know i i don't mean to disregard everybody but it's a bit extreme but I'm serious. Don't you kind of agree? I mean, this is impressive. This is really impressive. And he's stepping up to the plate, whether they win the series or not. He's the LeBron of Broadway. He's Jim Parsons, uh, an <laughs> act of God. What I was surprised with was the number of sports references you have when you now explain how you play God on Broadway. Uh, God has taken God has some stuff he'd like to set straight with the people. And uh, but he is too unfathomable to human beings to just come down here and talk. He has to take a body and, and, and voice his stuff through that body. And because I have a winning, likable personality, as he says, he picked me. He thinks I'll help the medicine go down. And, um, and really the, the crux of it is he's really wants to get some stuff straight about the 10 commandments, which were never supposed to be as popular as they are. You know, as he says, he wrote a lot of other laws. He would have really done this differently if he'd known we were going to pick up the Ten Commandments and run with it this hard. So so we we he gives a new Ten Commandments, really. And you had some sports references in there, too, which... A lot surprising. more than I realized yeah. until you were in the audience that night, yeah. and I knew you were there, and while I wasn't thinking about it too much consciously, subconsciously, your Brian's like, oh, yeah, Dan's here. And as I said one after the other, I was like, good God, we talk about sports a lot in this thing. I just hadn't thought of it before. And God has a problem with... Athletes who thank God. What, what, okay, here's what he says. Yes, he says that, you know, one of the things is that, um, you know, he's a brand. You know, he's, he's a lot of things to a lot of people, but the bottom line is God is a brand. And when he sees some backup wide receiver from, I can't say that no, word, university on Sports Center, point to him after scoring a touchdown, that cheapens the brand. You know. <laughs> This is very simple. Is he's what is he, I'm not with you when your team wins. I'm not against you when your team loses. I'm not with you or against you when you win or lose. I'm not a Laker. I'm not a Cowboy. I'm not a Red Wing. And I'm listen carefully as one. I'm not a Yankee. You know, I don't guide the ball between the uprights or into the basket or into the stadium or into your opponent's crotch. <laughs> yeah, this is a different type of God. When when you're this is the real thing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know. God is tired of people and angry and who can blame him? Yeah, you're right. You know, you're all right. the anger and hatred perpetrated by my children in an attempt to win my approval. Did but there are people who don't get this when right? There are people in the audience who just yeah, don't get this. Yeah, but there's people this. who don't get the big bang theory, you know what I mean? Yeah, but they don't walk out or get angry or you know, so you'll get people who may not understand. I've read some horrible stuff about the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> they can be very angry. Why is this on the air? You know, there's always somebody who hates something. But do you get hate mail? No, I don't. I, well, nobody's giving it to me, thank oh. God. <laughs> I'm sure there's been some unflattering letter that's come across somebody's desk. They didn't for Here, if you want to sign something for them, you know, so maybe you, send them a headshot, win them over. So you get just the nice fan mail? Yeah, well... I, I pay people around me <laughs> to, to protect me from people being mean to me. And I mean, to that level, I don't need, to, why would I need to hear that? But do you get a bag of fan mail that they bring in? Like, and, uh, it depends. It depends. I mean, sometimes I get stuff. Do you read reviews of uh, an act of God? No. Uh, no. Um, I, I certainly know the tone of the. It's the reviews. Reviews in general are very funny, but the reviews for theater are actually very, very important because it's just it makes a big difference. Um, but this is something I have to do eight times a week. You know what I mean? Like for a movie or a TV thing, it's in the can. It's over. So if you wanted to read it, it's not going to affect what you're doing. I if I read it, I have to go out and you know do it again you know what if they talk about a specific line you said that you didn't say that well well you'll never say it well now well i always read from the bottom up 
So yeah. I, I started for a the review end. for anything. Oh, for anything. Yeah, just I start at the bottom. Kind of do that too. I know what you mean. It's like, where are we going to get to with? Okay, now I'll read. Yeah, the rest. like sincerely yeah. or hope you know, you know all the best or yeah. Usually they don't say I hope you die. All the best. Right. You know. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, but that's I, true. I but I would have a hard time. A, a review can be the next show. Yeah, like a well, movie is just the, the movie's yeah. there, and there's nothing you can do no, about. No, that's it. true. This is true. This is true with theater. It is. It's the next show. And, and look, it's it's it, it, it. Of course, feels personal, but in in a weird way, a review is for everybody but you when it's your show or whatever. You know, it's it's really in a weird way none of your business. You know, it's one person's opinion, and that's fine. I actually like reviewers. I love reading reviews of like um, music albums and stuff. Uh, I especially enjoy reading like an album that I enjoy and I enjoy listening to. I'll go back and find the positive reviews of it, like in the major publications like Rolling Stone or Pitchfork or whatever, and I'll read it and I enjoy reading how they celebrate it. And because well done criticism is a very fun thing, it's fun to break down art, you know. He pleased God on Broadway and Act of God, uh, Jim Parsons. Uh, can you stay around for a little bit? Oh, I'd love to. I, I just, I know that you're, you know, you're conscious, uh, conscious about your voice and. Oh, no, no, this is easy. I've got Are a, you on a word count today? Because no, no. you're not on a word count. I'm on drugs, so you are, I don't need to be. You're on drugs. Okay. Uh, and would we ever do a Big Bang Theory movie? I don't think so. You don't think so? I think that's really unlikely. I don't see Has that it been going discussed? well. No, it's not been discussed. Okay. All right. Oh, we have two more years left on our... We have seasons nine and ten left on these contracts now. I mean... Are you retiring in two years? No. From the Big Bang Theory? <laughs> oh, from the Big Bang... No, uh, I don't know. I mean, the contract will be up, but, uh, you know, what with syndication and TV just in general the way it is, it's hard to know if you they could want. Walk, walk. You could walk away, right? Uh, well, sure. Okay, so you're walking away from the Big no, Bang Theory? No, no. Oh, you're no. not. You're not. This is ridiculous. Yeah, how does it feel, God? What? What is the point? What have I done to you? <laughs> Your wife's the one who asked me to go out. I didn't do anything. So jealous. And then you quickly said, yeah, we'll have a foursome. Well, it sounded fun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll continue with Jim Parsons. Uh, more awkwardness coming up on the Dan Patrick Show. A couple of years yeah. older than yeah. me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Have you heard Bear's Den? No. Good album. You're starting to feel on him, aren't you? I'm a what? You're starting to feel unhip. Well, I got kids, though, that, that, that always told oh, me. Oh, God. I mean. Yeah, my. So we have something for you, Jim. One of our fans, one of your fans, sent us a picture of you in a wax museum in Orlando. <gasps> it's up on the screen here. Do you think this looks like you? That's from a wax museum in Orlando. Whoa. Florida. In that picture, I mean, there's something about that angle that's not exactly. No. I've met that figure. You've I sat for that, that figure. shirt on our show. Yes, I gave them that for that figure. That's not, I mean, it's pretty close, is it? It's something about the angle that's not looking right. There is, there are other angles where it actually looks a lot like me. Well, you have a shot, you have a favorite side, so they probably didn't get the fit. Like, you demanded that you sit over there, that is right? Not like, true. Like, <laughs> as a wax figure <laughs> refusal, <laughs> lighting. Contract, and you, could you have killed that? I don't, know. I honestly don't know. I would be surprised if there weren't some ways in which you could make sure because they they try to be very they have no interest in like you not enjoying it. Right. You know what I mean? Not bad though. No, it, again, it, it's there's something about the picture that's not you know because I look a little cross-eyed right there. It doesn't look warm. <laughs> well, it's a wax figure. Fans get the fuck. I'm trying to take pictures. Well, all I know is that uh, Jennifer Lopez one looked very warm. <laughs> she looks very warm. Yeah. You can, you can you touch her butt. Yes, can't you can. You? Yeah, you, you can. That's, did you? That's, that's, I did not. You didn't? I did not. No. I would just die to know if it felt real. How would I know if it felt real? I've never well, been you know around what an ass feels like. <laughs> but not JLo's. <laughs> well, I don't think hers is you? different. Doc Emmerich, who called the NHL Finals clincher. For the Blackhawks last night, will join us top of the hour. Chris Souls, who was the Bachelor, McLovin gets to play fanboy. That'll be coming up next hour. And uh, Jose Bautista, the Blue Jays, will stop by the Man Cave. Jim Parsons, the Big Bang Theory, and uh, his Broadway show. He plays the Lord in an act of God on Broadway. How long does that uh, go on for? August second. August second. You're kind to help me 
get the word out. Thank you. Well, the good you. word. I feel like it's uh, it's 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 my mission. No, thank you. I'm meant to do this now. Thank you. Just oh yeah. Tell everybody about the uh, an act of God there. Hey, How many Broadway plays have you seen? Um, inc oh, including enough. yours. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, like that wasn't your first Broadway. No, show. it was not. Oh, got it. No, 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 no. That's really kind of what I was asking. No, no, no. Did you want it to be my first one? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. No, no. I support the theater. Uh, yeah, I've seen quite a few. My, oh, okay. My, I went to see. Um, uh, Emma Stone was in uh, Cabaret. Yes. Same space. Yes. Studio Fifty Four. Yes. How weird is that? I saw Emma Stone that too. She was great. But I took my kids. That's odd. Y yes, it was. That is very, so, very so odd. My wife. There's bare breast in that show. There's a whole lot. I mean, not that they shouldn't see boobies, but there's, you know what I mean. There's a lot going on in there's, that. It's play. more than bare breast. Yes. It's a lot of activity. Yes. And weird things yes. being said and done. Alan Cummings was awesome. This is why Daryl Morey came up though, because I saw <laughs> Daryl. I saw Cabaret with Daryl Morey and his children. Oh. And his wife was a little stunned at what, what he had brought them to. <laughs> well, I saw Keanu Reeves as I'm walking out, and I said hello to him, and then he said, you brought your kids to this? And I said, It's awkward, yeah. Dan. And, it, and Keanu goes, whoa, <laughs> whoa. And I went, oh, my God. And I, it's awkward. I couldn't wait to get him out of the building so people would be like, oh, you brought your kids to Cabaret? It's not what we think of with Dan Patrick. No. You know, a dirty, bad father. No. Yeah. Did you have to audition for an act of God? No. They just said, we've written this, you're uh, the ideal? It was being written. It was mostly written, and um, my agent uh, knew about it. I had no idea, and he kind of asked the writer, what would you think about this pairing me with this material? And and he basically, the writer was like, that sounds that sounds lovely. And then they talked to me, so which was nice. So had he gone, hell no, <laughs> I would have never known. Are you glad you did it? Oh, thrilled. I, 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 I truly do love doing theater. I love doing theater. I would not, you know, run fast necessarily to do another 90-minute. It's not a one-man show. I've got two wonderful angels involved, and they're both really incredible, actually. But I don't shut up for 90 minutes, and I don't leave the stage either. And, and... I, I'm not running to do that again. And I also miss having more communication with other actors on stage. Like, you know. What if you had to go to the bathroom? Well, I mean, I guess if it really was an emergency, I'm playing God and I can say whatever I want. Yes. You know, Michael, one of the angels, I can say, Michael, tap dance for a minute. And I could run <laughs> off and do my thing. But, um, but that hasn't happened. And, and, uh, but I do make sure we get a five-minute call every night and I run to the bathroom right then. And then just to reassure my 42-year-old bladder, it's going to be okay. I go, it's only 90 minutes, dude. Keep it together. And I do. You have attitude. Do, God does, yes. Do, God, God has attitude. Well, he should. Does He's every, God. But does everybody get God's attitude? Uh, uh, yes, but to varying degrees. Some nights they're really on board for God's attitude. And some nights I do have moments of going, did I just offend everyone in here? I mean, I know it's not me personally, but still. And, and I don't think that's happening. I think people just, you know, comedy is a funny thing with like, they could really, and, and especially with something like this, that's very wordy and some religious complications in it and stuff. You can enjoy it and not laugh out loud. You know, you can look out and see smiling faces sometimes that don't happen to be laughing. But when there are large, large spaces with no laughter, you do wonder, uh, did I lose you all? Because that's, cont when you hear that laughter, it feeds off each other. It empowers you. It's a wonderful, it's, it's really, really, the biggest laughing moments that you get to experience in the theater, not just this show, any show, are truly some of the most fun moments in life. Because it, and it's what live theater at its best is really so exciting about it. You feel that. You feel, it, it is the closest thing, I think, in entertainment to a live sporting event, you know, uh, because there are some similarities. Like, none of us know exactly what's going to happen. None of us know exactly, you know, there's 900 to 1,000 people there every night. You don't know what you're going to get. And like a sporting event, they the mood tends to infect all the other people. They, they There is a group mentality to it. Um, and and sometimes I feel like we're all in it together, and sometimes I feel like I'm in the middle of a lion's den at the zoo. Are you going to hell by for playing God like this? 
if uh, no, I, I may be going to hell, but it's not because I'm playing <laughs> God. There are plenty of other <laughs> issues. All right, I'm just curious. So if you'd like to see Jim in an act of God on Broadway, please do. He'll be there till August. Then he's got two more years before he walks away from the Big Bang Theory. That's not true. I oh, mean, so have two more years and then we'll see, but that's, just, that's not my issue. I didn't. Oh, God. Are you excited about Wimbledon coming up? Not really. N nice move there, God. But you should be. It's a wonderful sport. I love, I love Wimbledon. Well, you don't sound like it. You hear that music? I know we're going to a break. That means kicking me out it. of the studio. Yeah, that means get out of <laughs> you here. You know what? I want to leave. I will walk <laughs> away. An act of God. You'll love it. Jim Parsons on Broadway, and of course the star, the, one of the star, the LeBron of the Big Bang Theory. Oh my God! Thank you, Jim. I hate you. Thank you, Jim.